Nestor Cruz Andres. We are the team that will be competing in the SAE Aero Design Brazil competition. Our project advisor is Professor Dolikovic. Our team name is Pant Air Cargo to incorporate all different aspects of our project. Our main objective is to, to enter the competition held in Brazil at the end of October of this year and to design and build an airplane to, um, while, while meeting all the requirements and abiding by the rules and regulations set by the competition. Our motivation is to be the first team from FIU to win the competition. The funding that it will help bring to the university that we can invest in the aerospace program, um, creating an FIU Air Air aerospace club to promote interest in the aerospace engineering. And then we'll talk about the global learning aspects of I want to focus on the three global uh, aspects of the, of the project, awareness. Uh, okay, look, in terms of global awareness, we um, want to um, focus on the, the impact that our research can have on the future project competitors of the competition. We want to um, focus on the environmental awareness, which is this slide. Um, the environmental impact that we, uh, we want to reduce it as much as possible by using recyclable materials, mostly like wood, aluminum, iron. And there are three different um, classes we can compete in, regular, micro, and advanced. We'll be competing in the regular class. The main objective of our class is to lift as much weight as we can with a 20 kilogram weight restriction. Uh, what we will be judged on is the ratio of our payload that we carry, the weight of the payload <coughs> over the weight of our, our airplane without the payload, and our ability to correctly predict the amount of weight we'll be able to carry in the competition. These are some of the other restrictions that we have to abide by to avoid losing losing uh, points, like 61 meters for takeoff and 122 meters for landing. Uh, we will be flying in a gas-powered engine. Um, we are doing currently analysis on motor and, and, and propeller combinations to go with the maximum thrust to win the competition. The air flow selection is one of the main aspects of our uh, project. We have a couple of the optional candidates for the air pool. Uh, we want to evaluate them, evaluate them all in performance, strength, and manufacturability. Some of them are better than not the others. Um, going back to the problem statement, uh, the main restriction uh, in the geometry of the airplane is that we cannot have more than 0.775 meters squared in the top view of the airplane, everything included, even the fuselage, the engine, everything counts in the area. We cannot exceed 0.775. Uh, and we have biplane wings, both wings um, count. This is our first um, concept design. Um, the main advantage of this design is that um, it reduces the, the um, top view area uh, because of the, the payload is, is right underneath the, the wing, as you can see. This was our, uh, our second concept as we try to minimize the, the uh, aerial uh, projection area a little bit more. We, we try to distribute the whole payload uh, within the wings, which usually is a good idea, but we were, we've started to run into some problems uh, with the fact that once we apply uh, G forces, whether it's positive G's or negative G's, we realized that we, with our simulations that we were running into uh, too much of a displacement problem, and so we tried to overcome those problems by adding more and more structure to it, it became evident that our aircraft was just becoming heavier, and, and it just became uh, uh, not a very good concept, which eventually led to the thought process that we needed to come up with a new concept uh, that would more of a traditional design. And this is it right here, where we took the, uh, uh, we, we used a payload compartment that is running longitudinal uh, along the fuselage. We're trying to minimize also the frontal surface area, trying to make it as sleek as possible so that the thrust is, is uh, unobstructed. Uh, in this particular configuration, uh, we're also looking Okay, uh, our timeline is, uh, uh, we're pretty much on track right now. We plan on uh, uh, building this airplane in June. We'd like to start flying it in July. And we, uh, we have actually uh, an FIU uh, pilot that we were able to find, and this is him right here. His name is Keyshawn Kelpo, and he's been attending our uh, team meetings. He's, he's been providing us with some of his thoughts and ideas, and we wanted to give him some, some recognition. And also we have, uh, want to give some special recognition so hail Brady because he's also been helping us with some of the uh, optimization ideas uh, for the aircraft. Any questions?
I'll start off. Did you do any LD analysis at the track? Because you seem to have a lot of wing surfaces there. It seems like the, it, it's a real target for a lot of drag. Uh, how did you evaluate that? And what is it? Well, we don't have the numbers yet, sir, because our design did evolve. As a matter of fact, just recently again. Uh, but um, that is one of the numbers that we, we were originally very concerned with, which is, for example, why the first concept was eliminated because of that whole uh, drag uh, problem. Uh, we were, our Air Force, for example, we're still analyzing. Uh, we would like to get something with a high lift and a, and a low drag coefficient. Uh, um, however, we, we may not actually end up with our optimum choice because of the fact that that particular airfoil required a very thin uh, trailing edge, which is susceptible to damage. We're still learning, as a matter of fact, if I may, uh, I'd like to take the opportunity to recognize the uh, current SAE team who just came back from Georgia, uh, uh, Dr. Thermonte, and then you have uh, Luis and Claudia here, and they did fantastic. They got, Congratulations, they got <laughs> Yesterday, that was one of the things that I learned from them that is that on their air foil, that long trailing edge was very susceptible to damage. So we're we're trying to our design is probably going to evolve as a result of some of the lessons learned from them. Well, you got to build a little plane first to see if it flies, or you can going right to the 44 pounds, a lot of weight. I know you don't have to wait, race all of that, but it sounds like they want you to have a plane that's going to have some lift to it that'll Correct. pick up some weight. Yes, sir. Because I know I, I had a friend that built a nice big model the first time he did it, he crashed it. He should have started a little one. <laughs> you know, just from a practical standpoint right. Right. To, to see what flies. Well, we'll build, we'll build the, the wing and build wind tunnel testing up in every riddle just to validate our results and data, but not the entire plane because it would be too big. Um, well, our pilot is a very good pilot. He's been, he's been flying planes for six years, and we saw him in action just recently, and we have no doubt that he won't crash our planes. <laughs> but the plane may command the pilot. Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> Which is why we want to get, get it building really soon so he can be used to flying it before we enter the competition, which is in the end of October. The other, the other thing, sir, is that we're that was one of the, our first considerations. We could have decided, originally we decided with something a little bit more innovative, like I said, with a lifting canard in the front. Uh, because of those uh, risks that, that we thought about, that, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's more innovative, it potentially could uh, perform better, but potentially it could also lead to a disaster. So we were, this is another reason why we're more uh, leaning towards a more of a traditional design, although we want to optimize it as much as possible. But we feel pretty confident that it, it will fly. This, we're, we're pretty, uh, pretty confident about that. Do we have another question? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. 